As I'm walking back, he bumps into me, says, hey, soldier, I want to give you a gift. And I looked down and my first thought was, I can't get away from these religious nuts. They're everywhere. I was born and raised into a Catholic home. Three of my aunts were nuns. I went to the Catholic school where my aunt, Sister Rosetta, was my principal. And, um, you know, I knew that God wasn't in that growing up. Um, just the, the vileness of my priest, um, the anger that they had, the anger that the nuns had. There was no love, there was no compassion that I ever felt. Um, I was never taught the Bible. Um, and I remember seeing my priest do some things that um, getting so drunk they had to carry him up and throw him in the church and those kind of things. And I knew God wasn't in that, but I didn't know how to find God or where God was. I'd never heard the gospel. My dad was a, a very violent, angry Italian. And um, I remember picking my mom up off, up off the floor many times and um, you know, weeping with her or her trying to rip him off of me or one of my brothers or sisters or eight of us, her trying to save us from him and screaming, Bob, you're gonna kill him. And uh, you know, my dad did things like kick my brother's ribs in, he punched me in the face and he was always drinking. And uh, when he would get up, um, after he was drunk, many times he was even worse. But uh, I saw him throw the Christmas tree over the back porch, you know, just uh, do all kinds of terrible things. I remember uh, my brother first taking me to a bar room at 12 years old. I had already been drinking for quite a while, but he put my dad's naval pea coat on me, took me to Bill and Helen's in Shemokin, Pennsylvania, sat me on a bar stool at 12 years old. Their philosophy was if you're old enough to reach the bar, you're old enough to drink. And I started drinking in bars at 12. Got on marijuana about 12, 11 to 12, and then got on acid and coke and meth and you know everything that I could get my hands on opium they became my religion they became my God and it was an, a, a way to for me to get out of the pain or hide and try to kind of throw a tarp over all the turmoil in my life and in my home I got straight F's in ninth grade and failed ninth grade and um, so my life was just in absolute turmoil. I was a very angry, bitter fighter. And, um, you know, at the same time in love with my music and all of that. And just doing everything I could to feed my flesh. And with all those things I was doing, I, I began to have run-ins with the law frequently. And um, I remember more than once waking up, you know, and looking all one eye open and seeing mom weeping through the jail bars. and saying, Teddy, you're going to kill yourself. It's, it, you know, what happened to you? And when are you going to change? And I mean, it just feel the feeling of just worthlessness and, and uh, wanted to quit drugs so many times, wanted to quit alcohol, but just never found a way to do it. Um, it just kept calling me. And then I was in the crowd and the gang and all of that stuff. And and it just, uh, it was very difficult years for me. So I got busted over and over and over five times for underage drinking by the time I was 17 and a bunch of other uh, charges and I became like the bad dude in town that you don't want to be around you don't want your kids around them um, that's who I was and it, it's shameful to look back now and I, I'll never forget the day that he first introduced it to me we were driving to work on a shed together. I was trying to pay some fines off and uh, my brother picked me up and I was waiting for him to put his raunchy music in, his eight track of, of uh, Aerosmith Toys in the Attic. And that was what, you know, I lived for that because that was what he introduced me to. And he was so cool because he listened to that. And but I remember him putting gospel music in and I just about laughed myself through the floorboards of the rusted out truck because I was under conviction. God was dealing with my heart. And I told him, you know, this is not going to last. They brainwashed you. But he told me, he said, Ted, I got saved. I'm not going back to that lifestyle. But I, I watched him and I thought, I'm going to see if this is real, you know. And my brother lived a Christian life. 
in the meantime, my mother got saved. 50 years old, weeping on a King James Bible, my brother showed her there's one mediator between God and man. She had been trusting Mary her whole life, and my mother at 50 years old got saved. She'd been witnessing to me, my brother had been witnessing to me, telling me I was going to the lake of fire, and he just came after me with the gospel, and uh, loved me, and wept, and, and I knew it was real, but I thought, I, I'm gonna go down there, straighten my life out, go to Fort Benning, Georgia, prove to them I can be an army guy, I don't need religion to straighten my life out. And I was kind of running from God, you know, thinking God's not in Georgia. Got to the reception center and there was a man walking around with a, a case of Little Gideon's King James Version Bibles. And before I knew it, I was walking back from the amnesty box where I had put marijuana in or something. It's a place you can put your drugs in. You don't get caught with it when you get to your to your base and stuff. So as I'm walking back, he bumps into me, says, hey, soldier, I want to give you a gift. And I looked down and my first thought was, I can't get away from these religious nuts. They're everywhere, you know. And then I found out that God in Pennsylvania is the same God in Georgia. And uh, God was after me. And I thought, well, just, I'm Catholic. You know, I'll put this on my stack of Bibles, make me look religious and stuff. And um, never thought I'd read it. And my life just began to fall apart in basic training until one night, uh, finally, I decided that I, I needed to find out what that book said. I couldn't quote John 3.16. And so I, I got to see what's in this. And God was drawing me. And um, so I went into the bathroom. You know, I'd sit in the stall because you weren't allowed to have lights on when this drill sergeant went home. And uh, I'd go in there and open up that, that little uh, Gideon's King James Version Bible, and I started reading Matthew. And I read the book of Matthew, and then you know, each night I'd read more. I'd come back from training, dog tired, and I'd crawl under my wool blanket, and I'd get my flashlight out, and I'd read, you know, Mark and then Luke. And But I got to the book of John, and something really began to happen as God began to just really convict me of sin. And in the book of John, of course, uh, Jesus meets up with Nicodemus and he says, you must be born again. And um, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so I, I, I marveled at that, literally, you know, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again, Jesus said. I was marveling because I just didn't get that. I thought, what is this, you know? And so I, I closed it and um, I went to training the next morning, got up at 4.30 in the morning, went out, ran and did all my training. <clears throat> but all day, all I can hear is, you must be born again. You must be born again, echoing in my heart. And I must have got dropped for push-ups 20 times that day because I was so distracted that, uh, you know, I, I knew I needed to get born again, but I, I didn't know what to do. And um, so I finally got back that night, and I turned to the next chapter, which is John chapter 4. And the story of John chapter 4, it was like God came into my barracks. And this is going to sound crazy, but it's true. And like Jesus sat on my bunk because he, he was speaking to me personally out of the passage. So like when he met this woman on the well, he went there intentionally to meet one person. And I knew God was coming to Fort Benning to deal with my heart. And I knew that he revealed that to me, you know, and she had tried all the things of the world. And, but he made this statement. And this is the one that really broke my heart. He said, if you drink the water that I shall give you, you'll never thirst again. And um, when I saw that, I thought, wow, that is me. And God was telling me, Ted, you have been drinking from every uh, fount. You've been drinking from every well in the world, and you're still empty on the inside. He said, the only thing you haven't done is, is try Jesus. And literally, I had tried to find happiness in everything, except for the one thing that was right there in front of me the whole time that my parents, my mother was trying to tell me, my brother was trying to tell me. And so... Literally, when I saw that, my life flashed before my eyes and I realized I had been spending the last 17 years of my life trying to fill the void with everything but the one thing that could fill the void. And I decided that night I wanted a drink of what Jesus had. And I didn't want to thirst anymore. I didn't want to be empty. I didn't want to lay awake at night wondering what will happen if I die. And I rolled out onto my knees and I can't remember exactly what I said, but I know that I put my faith and trust in Christ and I cried out to God and asked Him to forgive me and save me that night. When I stood up off of my knees, my life had changed. I knew that for the first time in my life, I was right with God. I had a relationship with Him. And um, fast forward after that, um, about uh, six years later, um, God had been dealing with my heart to preach from that very night, but I didn't understand any of that. I was so green and just so ignorant of everything. But about six years later, um, God met me again in an apartment down in Halifax, Pennsylvania and broke my heart. 
Um, and I surrendered all to him to be a preacher of the gospel. And I was told you're supposed to go to Bible college, so that's what I did. And uh, went, and uh, God had my wife there for me. And uh, so I met my wife. In recent years, uh, we moved to Florida, and we moved to Florida about six and a half months ago, seven months ago, and uh, we're now starting the Bayview Baptist Church down there. And so I just praise the Lord for finding me, knowing where I'm at. You know, people say you need to find God. God found me. He found me in central Pennsylvania in a Catholic home, and I just praise His holy name that I know Him, that I'm forgiven, that everything that happened before, that's the old man, he's dead. And now I'm alive in Jesus Christ. My wife and I have five children. Uh, four of them are now married per, in the perfect will of God. We've got a great son, 15 years old, Luke. He's my song leader in the church. And I look at what my family was, and I look at what God gave me, and it's just the miraculous hand of God did it all. There's no way to explain it other than there's a God in heaven that loves us. And I'm so thankful that he loves me.